Hello, in today's lecture, we will learn about Linux for AI. Those who plan to continue study or use deep learning techniques in the future should be familiar with Linux. It is possible to learn deep learning techniques and create models in operating systems other than Linux, but there are some problems. The biggest reason is that most deep learning libraries are being developed based on Linux operating system. If you do not use Linux, there is a high probability that many problems will occur in the process of developing software based on deep learning technology and utilizing open source libraries. Those who aim to learn basics can take this course even if they use Windows operating system but it's not recommended. First, let's learn what Linux is. Linux is an open source operating system similar to the Unix operating system. The first Linux was developed by a man named Linus Torvalds, and many others have developed a variety of similar Linux OS since then. Linux was developed to replace the OS called Unix. Since Unix was a private software developed by Bell Telephone Laboratories. If you do not understand what an operating system is, you can think of it as a software that manages your program like Windows. Unix, the origin of Linux, is a computer operating system that supports multitasking and multi users. Development of this operating system began at Bell Labs in 1970s. Computers of the past were very different from the computers you see in your home today. It was very expensive and large, so several researchers in an institution or a company had to share one computer. Unix was born after the efforts to develop an operating system that could provide an environment where multiple users could each run a program on a single computer. And Linux was developed as a part of a movement to create an open source operating system similar to Unix. Ubuntu is a kind of Linux. There are many different types of Linux. Some of the popular Linux include CentOS, Linux Mint, and Debian. Ubuntu is an open source operating system modified from Debian. It doesn't matter which Linux you use, but this course will be based on Ubuntu desktop operating system. This course is for those who have learned Python programming. If you haven't studied Python programming yet, you should study Python programming first before taking this course. In this lecture, we will explain Python's operating system related libraries. If you're familiar with Python programming, you can skip this lecture. The Python programming language is an interpreter language, which works in such a way that a program called a Python interpreter reads Python code and manipulates the computer to do tasks. There are rules for how the Python interpreter works, but there are many ways to implement this interpreter program. It's like how a pencil case can be made of wood, plastic, or metal. As mentioned earlier, the Python interpreter can be implemented in a variety of ways. There are also various versions of the Python programming language. In the past, Version 2 of the Python programming language was widely used, but version 3 is being used recently. This course is based on Python programming language version 3.8. Also, there are several kinds of Python interpreter for version 3.8. Among them, we are going to use a Python interpreter called Anaconda. Miniconda is a free version of Anaconda. Anaconda is a Python distribution and Python package management system developed by a company called Anaconda Incorporated. 
Anaconda Python and Anaconda Package Manager work on Windows, Linux, and Mac. We will learn more about Miniconda in the next and subsequent lectures. With Miniconda, the process of installing the CUDA toolkit we learned yesterday is easy. In addition to this, for several reasons, we plan to use Miniconda for lectures in the future. You can take this lecture even if you use a Python interpreter other than Miniconda, but it is not recommended because there may be some technical difficulties during the configuration of the development environment. Now, let's install Miniconda. Download Miniconda for Python language version 3 from the first link. The standard installation method of Miniconda for Linux can be found through the second link. Both links are also available on the course webpage. After the download is complete, install Miniconda with the Bash shell, which is the default shell of Linux terminal. Install Miniconda with the default option, and you only need to answer yes to the last question. After completing the installation, close and reopen the terminal, and you will see the letter base attached to the front of the prompt as shown in the picture. By the way, what is Bash? Bash stands for Born Again Shell and is a free replacement for the Born Shell designed by a programmer named Brian Fox. The Born Shell was a shell developed at Bell Labs a commercial software created by a computer scientist named Stephen Bourne. And Bash was developed to replace this Bourne shell with free open source software. Shell is a command interpreter software that processes commands to control operating systems such as Unix and Linux. And Bash is just one of several kinds of shells. There are several shells but this course is based on Bash. Since the default shell of Ubuntu Desktop is Bash, you do not need to set up an additional software to use Bash. Now, let's run Python. Open the terminal, type Python, and hit Enter. Then, as shown on the screen, the Python shell is started. And you can see that the Conda Python interpreter is launched. If you want to exit the Python shell, just press Ctrl D. In the computer, data is stored in a named state on non volatile storage. This location is what we call a file. Operating systems such as Ubuntu and Windows includes software called file system that manages these files. And the file system manages files in the form of numeric data. For example, on a computer, character A in a text file is stored as the number 97, and B is stored as 98. In this way, all text is converted to a number on the computer and stored. Similarly, since voice data is wave data that can be expressed numerically, amplitude and wavelength information according to time are stored as numbers. So how are images stored on the computer? The colors a person sees on a monitor are combinations of red, green, and blue light. Physically, all colors except black can be expressed by combining the three light intensities. Of course, black can also be expressed on the screen if the monitor does not emit light. The intensity of one light on a monitor can be expressed as a number. For example, orange can be expressed as red light 255, green light 160, and blue light 16. In this way, color information is also converted into numbers and stored in the computer. And on the computer, an image is stored as a combination of tiny tiles of light. You can think of an image in a computer as a mosaic painting. 
The resolution of an image refers to the number of light pixels present in one image. It is also possible to express color of each tile as a number. For example, if the tile at 50th from the left, the 30th from the top of the image is orange, the color of this tile can be represented by the five numbers 50, 30, 255, 160, 16. Likewise, images are also represented and stored in a computer as a combination of numbers. Video is a combination of image and sound. Therefore, if both image and audio information according to time are expressed as numbers and time is also expressed as number, video data can also be converted into numbers, processed and stored. Like this, all data is represented and stored as numbers in computers. Of course, when programming in Python, you don't have to consider how the operating system transforms the data into numbers. Now, to warm up, let's create a Python program that creates files. Write the program displayed on the screen and run it. If you run the above program, test.txt file is created. Now, add a few more lines of text to that text file, then create and run the program below. Python also provides a function to read an entire file at once. The read lines function of the file object reads every line of the file, stores them as elements of a list, and returns the list. The read function reads the entire text of the file as a single string and returns it as a string type. The with keyword opens a file with the open function and keeps the file object open only while the code block below is executed, and it automatically closes the file when the code block is finished. You should already be familiar with the file related functions so far. If you're still not sure if you're good at Python programming, Try implementing one of these two programs yourself. If you find it difficult to implement the two programs in the previous slide by yourself, we recommend that you study Python programming before continuing with this course. Take our Introduction to Python Programming course, or the open source Python programming box on screen will help you study Python programming. If you can implement the programs shown in the previous slides, you'll be able to continue with the course. Let's take a look at Python's OS module. The OS module is a module that provides functions related to the operating system. This module is not used often, but it is used occasionally. And there is a high probability that you will see this module when you deal with code related to deep learning. If you check the Python reference, you can check the functions of the OS module and see what they do. Save the code shown in the slide to a Python file and try running the file. If we run this program, we can see that the return value of the OS get CWD function is the path where the Python file is executed. CWD is an abbreviation of currently working directory. The os.getcwd function returns the location where a certain Python program was executed. The absolute path of any file can be found by calling the os.path.absPath function. For example, if you navigate to the folder where the file hello text exists in the terminal and then run the Python code shown in the slide, the code in the slide will return the absolute path of hello.txt. 
Other functions in os.path are also used occasionally. The isDIR function determines whether a path is a directory or not when the path is given as a string argument. isFile checks whether the path argument is a file. The listDIR function returns a list of files in the directory when a directory is given as an argument. When a certain path string is given as multiple arguments, the join function converts the strings into a single path string and returns it. For example, if a folder path and file name are given as arguments to the join function, the join function returns the file path as a string. Let's take a look at the sys module. The sys module provides functions that can be used to control situations that occur while a Python program is running. A list called sys.argv is frequently used in the sys module. This list is accessible when the Python program is run. As you know, we run any Python program in the terminal in the form python a.py. In this case, it is sysargv that stores the command text that runs the Python program. If we check the program on the screen, we can see that the value is the second element in the argv list. If you run this program, you can see that argv stores the strings given after Python. If you print out all the elements in the argv list, you can see that the strings after Python are stored separated by spaces. sys.argv is used to read a file from the file address entered in the command when the Python program is executed. For example, if you want to access world.txt in a folder called hello from a program called a.py, run the Python program as shown in the slide. argv can also be used to set any option value when executing the program. For example, if the print.py program runs as many times as the number entered in argv and ends, as shown in the slide, if you enter 2 after the file name, the program will be able to check the value in sys.argv. For example, when the program a.py shown in the previous slide is as follows, this program reads the world.txt file in the hello folder, prints it out on the screen, and ends. In the next lecture, we will learn about the Python library related to AI. Thank you.